infamy! They've all got it in for me! I dreamt about you last night, nurse. Did you? No, you wouldn't let me. Oh, hello! <laughs> Have you got a large one? I've had no complaints so far. <laughs> The Carry-Ons, anarchic and irreverent, saucy and bawdy. From Kenneth Williams' imperious matron, take them away, to Sir James's filthy cackle, the hugely popular Carry-Ons were a cultural phenomenon adored by young and old alike. With a record-breaking 31 films in the franchise, the Carry-Ons were filmed here at Pinewood Studios. Part of England's ancient tradition of bawdy comedy, the carry-ons evolved out of the risque humour of music hall, becoming the cinematic equivalent of Donald McGill's saucy seaside postcards. From 1958's Carry On Sergeant to 1992's Carry On Columbus, the carry-on film spanned 34 years, longer than any other franchise except one, James Bond, which was also filmed here at Pinewood. And it's a worthy comparison, for Bond and the carry-ons are both cultural icons, as quintessentially British, dare I say English, as fish and chips and the changing of the guard. But whilst Bond toned down its 1960s masculinity to placate the critics, it's hard to imagine a series of films more politically incorrect than the deliciously cheeky carry-ons. This is Maidenhead Town Hall, and whilst it's been the backdrop for several classic comedies, including three carry-ons, it was that iconic ambulance scene from 1967's Carry On Doctor that cemented its place in British film history. This year, Maidenhead Council will decide whether to modernise and adapt the building or abandon it as a relic of the 1960s. They might as well be discussing the carry-on films, as a similar debate now engulfs them too. In recent years, humorless critics have condemned these harmless comedies as sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic and fascist, and for positively oozing misogyny and toxic masculinity. Last month, Britbox, the streaming service of ITV and the BBC, placed warnings on the carry-on films, declaring that they contained offensive content, outdated stereotypes, nudity and racial imagery. This for films that entertained generations of children on rainy afternoons, myself included. The climate for a modern carry-on revival would seem to be inhospitable at best. But that's the hope and ambition of one producer, and plans for a new, more politically correct carry-on film are well underway. Thirty years after the release of the last carry-on, production of the new film was supposed to start in December 2020, until halted by the COVID-19 lockdown. What will this new carry-on be about? We have yet to see. But as the carry-ons excelled at puncturing pomposity and poking fun at institutions, there is no shortage of targets. In the 1970s, they mocked both the feminist movement and the trade unions. So how about a modern comedy sending up social justice warriors at woke universities? Carry-on students? I'd go and see that. But could a politically correct comedy be a true carry-on? Battle axe wives, lecherous husbands, scantily clad dolly birds, slap and tickle, the battle of the sexes, cross-dressing for laughs, and names like must have a leak. It's hard to think of a carry-on ingredient that isn't off limits today. The carry-ons were never cruel, mean-spirited or explicit either, so it's also hard to see how their saucy innuendo and sexual repression would appeal to a generation raised on Frankie Boyle, Pornhub and Channel 4's Naked Attraction. In truth, the carry-ons appeal today lies in nostalgia as much as anything else, hearkening back to a gentler time. They are televisual comfort food, as familiar and satisfying as old slippers. Perhaps that's how they should remain. Politically correct carry-ons? Stop messing about. <laughs>